morning, everyone. I'm Seth Jessica, and this is Katrina Hansen. Welcome to episode number four of Homes for Heroes Live. On today's show, we will be taking you along as we donate blood for National Blood Donor Month. We will also be joined by a very special guest to introduce, introduce an important segment that will be airing on Homes for Heroes Live over the month of February. But first, here are the best stories from the hero community for this week. We may be a little biased this morning with this story because it comes from St. Paul, Minnesota. Earlier this month, Santa Monica hosted the World's Strongest Firefighter Competition, where St. Paul's very own Sarah Reasoner finished fifth out of nine. Reasoner was the only woman in the contest to be competing. Our next story is about a Navy SEAL and his accomplishments that are out of this world. Dr. Johnny Kim and former enlisted Navy SEAL member and Harvard alum became the first Korean American NASA astronaut to embark on assignments to the space station. Kim began his career as a seaman recruit after graduating high school in 2002. He wanted to find himself and to get out of, the, get out of his comfort zone. Kim served as a combat medic, sniper, navigator, and served across two deployments to the Middle East. In 2012, he graduated with a bachelor's degree in mathematics from the University of San Diego, and then went on to earn a medical degree from Harvard Medical School. During his first year of residency, he was selected as one out of 18,000 applicants as a NASA astronaut candidate. Kim tweeted, a true privilege and honor to walk among the NASA astronauts corps with my brothers and sisters. We know there are many qualified and deserving candidates out there. We're the lucky ones to, to represent humanity. Let's work towards a better future for our world and our children. Thanks, Katrina. Great stories as always. So January is National Blood Donor Month and actually the 50th year that our country has recognized this monthly observance. In 1970, President Nixon declared January as National Blood Donor Month to pay tribute to voluntary blood donors and to increase blood donations by others. And knowing the current critical need for blood donors and blood donations, we hosted a blood drive here at Homes for Heroes headquarters. Not only was this a great way for us to kick off the new year, it also gave us the opportunity to learn more about the importance of donating blood and the impact that it makes in our communities. The great people at Memorial Blood Centers were kind enough to chat with us while taking my blood. So if you're on the fence about donating blood, check out this great clip from our Homes for Heroes blood drive and you'll see just how easy and how important donating blood is. Okay, so we are at Homes for Heroes headquarters. Memorial Blood Centers has come out to do a blood drive for National Blood Domination Month. And I'm actually going to go donate some blood and talk to these great people about the importance of donating blood and where it all goes. So let's go. So I'm here with Amanda from Memorial Blood Centers. Amanda's going to be taking my blood for me. She already put me through, what was it, like a 10 minute interview process. Maybe can you start with, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about Memorial Blood Centers, what it is, what the mission of Memorial Blood Centers is? So Memorial Blood Centers is a uh, blood donation center, and what we do is we serve Minnesota's hospitals. Um, if we serve all of them and we still have some left over, we use them for, you can send it out for like other natural disasters. So we've done some for the hurricanes, and we've done um, some for the shootings that have been, you know, happening around. Um, and it's just, our mission is just to make sure that everybody who needs some gets some. So is Memorial Blood Centers uh, just a local organization or for people who are, you know, tuning in nationwide? Oh, are there more Memorial Blood Centers in their local communities that they might be? In? So we have some... We are just a U.S. based one, so we have, we actually partnered with Rhode Island and we have some in Nebraska and New York. Um, so we're all kind of affiliated, so even if you're not actually, they won't be called Memorial, but we all kind of partnered up, so you'd still be doing kind of the same thing. So what is the critical need for um, blood donations and why are blood drives so important? So the critical, the critical need for it is blood cannot be synthetically made. So we can't make it, we can't, you know, we need donors, just like you said, that come in and are willing to donate for mm -hmm. those who either need it for surgeries or for chemo, you know, to make sure that they can still function. 
um, or for you know burn victims, you get their they get your plasma. So it's just the critical. It's always there, and it's very hard during the winter and summer months when everybody is either on vacation or out of town um, or they have cold. So it's we're always in constant need of something. Okay. So are there blood types that you're, you're more um, dire need of right now, or is that constantly changing, or? Is yeah, it so it's, we have um, O negative, which is the universal donor. We are in constant need of them because they can go to everybody. So just because you're not O negative doesn't mean that you won't be able to use theirs. And then also there's um, a couple other ones here about, I think they're A, B, and then A's and B's, um, all of the negatives, so like the negative blood types. We're in constant need of because there's just not a ton of the population that has them. Okay, so if you're an O negative blood donor, we need you. We need, we need you to come out and support the local blood drives in the community because that can really benefit, correct me if I'm wrong, but that can benefit everybody, even if you're not that blood type. Exactly. So, all negatives, come out and show support for your local blood drives. You kind of you, you, you kind of already answered this, but what happens to the blood? Um, so I'm going to donate blood right now. You're going to take probably like half my blood out of my body. Right? We take a pint, so not, not quite yeah. half. <laughs> Okay, a pint. All right, so you're gonna take a pint of blood, and I assume that you're not gonna donate to like some vampire society, right? Right. Okay. Correct. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. Where is the blood actually gonna go? So once you're done donating, it will go back to our lab in St. Paul to get tested, and then, assuming everything goes well and you don't come back with anything positive, such as this test that we do, it will be sent to whichever hospital needs it. Okay, so Stefan, have you squeeze a couple times for me and then hold tight. Okay, you can relax your hand. Just want to make sure your vein was good. We wouldn't want to stick you multiple times. <laughs> That's not very fun. That's, that's okay. The thought of it is more intimidating than the actual. So where were you then? You were going to most, most of the time you make it about 10 times worse in your head if you start thinking about it than it actually is. Yeah. Is fun? So what is this that you're putting on right now? So this is iodine. It, we use it to sterilize your arms. So we want to make sure that none of the bacteria that might be on your skin throughout the day gets in with the needle. That would not be a good thing. No. Yeah. And we use two different types here. I like to think of them as like soap and water. So that first one we put on is like soap. It kills anything that might be on your arm. And then we go around in the circle for the second one to rinse anything away. So it's like the water. So, I mean, let's talk about some of the perks of donating blood. Okay. So the reason why I wanted to do, the reason why we're doing this segment, the reason why I'm donating blood, because I know that it really does part in saving lives, right? That's yes. the first and Yes, point. definitely. It's, it's a great way to kick off the new year. Yes. It's a great way to do something great um, to help others and save lives. So for me, that was my yes. why I wanted to donate blood. But you guys do some perks too. Like, I got some free coffee today. Yes. So what are, what are the perks that you typically see for people donating blood? So we do it monthly. So it depends on what month. This, this month it's obviously you get the Dunkin' Donuts coupons. Um, we are also doing a long sleeve t-shirt giveaway. So you come in, you try and donate. Even if you can't, you get a t-shirt. So it's one of those things that it's just nice. They're really nice t-shirts. Um, other times it's been wild tickets or sports tickets that you can get. Really? Yep. Um, there's been a couple of times. I think we last month, I think we were doing um, wild tickets for... It's for a certain game, so it's whatever game that they decide to, or that they can get tickets for. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it, it's a wide range. Um, I know during the summer, I think we were doing trip giveaways also, so you can choose between different places that we've set up. See, so not only do you get to walk away feeling great that you are probably going to save somebody's life by giving a pint of blood, which is really, it's not that much in no. the grand scheme of things, right? Right. And so you get to walk away knowing that you're going to save lives. Yes. But then you get like, thank you Dunkin' Donuts for the coffee, by the way. If you want to sponsor my future videos, go ahead. But 
um, you get these um, raffles or these fun prizes yeah. that you get to enter. So you could potentially go to a sports game yeah. or like a free t shirt. So I used to do races. I used to do, like, I used to be a triathlete. I would call myself a triathlete because I was <laughs> never good enough to be a triathlete. But I used to run races. You get those t shirts at the end. Yep. That was way harder than this is. Like, yeah. this is pretty easy. Definitely. And I know people will sign up for races. They'll pay 50 bucks mm -hmm. to sign up for a race. They don't enjoy it, and they just do it for the t-shirt. Yes. Here, it's free. Well, you have to give a little bit of blood, but there's no monetary cost to it. You get to donate blood, and you get a t-shirt. That, that to me, that sounds way more appealing than a race. A lot less work. Exactly. Exactly. So, not that I'm in a competition or anything, but what is like the kind of like what is what is kind of the faster end of blood donation? So, average is seven to ten minutes. Most people are within that five six minute, which is pretty good. Um, the fastest I've ever seen is about I want to say three fifty two, so three minutes and fifty two seconds. Um, we don't don't recommend going that fast. Um, tends to give your body a little bit of issue. <laughs> Send it into shock. A little bit. All right. Well, I'm not putting like the turbo thrusters on, but if I hit if I hit the 350 mark, um, I, I don't know. I can't ask for <laughs> Somebody's gonna give me a choke. <laughs> can you coordinate that, Katrina? Yeah. Uh, for people who are tuning in and um, people who are just kind of learning about blood donation, how can they get involved in donating blood in their local community? Not just here in Minneapolis, but say if they're tuning in from. Dallas, Texas, or Orlando, Florida, and they're like saying, hey, I want to kick off the new year and donate some blood. How can they get involved in their local community? So the first thing is, and I don't know if it works for everybody, for all the blood banks, but um, most of the time Red Cross also does this, but you can look it up online and figure out which drive is closer to you. We have our website, www.mbc.org, mm -hmm. and you can put in your zip code or your city, um, and then you can figure out, there'll be a list of blood drives and you can always figure out which one is closer to you. Okay. That is the easiest way. Other than that, I think it's just kind of by word of mouth. So if you know somebody who's done it, you can kind of ask them and okay. go from there. Sure. And I know that you can't speak for, you work on Minneapolis, so you can't really speak for other cities nationwide, but I did some looking through the site where there's blood donation yep. drives. And it seems like there's several donation blood drives that are out constantly happening within Minneapolis. Yeah. So how am I doing here? Am I am I am I like a turbo or a turtle? You are just right at that average time. So you're you're not slow but you're not super fast. Although I still think it's perfect as long as you know you don't pass out. So I, I mean I, you know what? I, you don't have any wood around here but I was gonna say this like this is super easy. Like <laughs> I'm super comfortable. There's like no discomfort. Uh, I don't feel like I had it. I feel like things are going to go south just because I said that, but okay. it's super easy. You are actually all done right now. Really? Yeah. Super easy. Okay, best part of the whole thing here, what color do you want for your arm wrap? Uh, so I have to go with gold because it's playoff weekend and Gophers was on the OPEC pool. And there's gold in the Gophers. And then Minnesota Vikings. And you got purple gloves on, so uh -huh. you got the color. <laughs> okay, so for your wrap, leave it on for two to four hours. Nothing too strenuous in terms of activity if you can help it. Otherwise, just take it easy. Does that, does that mean I can't type on a computer and I have to go home? I, it depends on what you think is strenuous. <laughs> it's a lot, it's a lot you should be able to bend and move your arm. <laughs> Yep. Awesome. Okay. We do have free snacks and drinks up front. If you go out the other way of the bus there. Oh, uh, we definitely got. You guys definitely got to record the additional perks. Okay. This is your care guide. It tells you how to take care of yourself on the inside. Bottom number here is in case you come down with any cold or flu-like symptoms within the next couple of days. Usually, if you do, it's because you have it in your system already, which means it's in your donation. So we obviously don't want to give that to somebody who's already sick. Yeah. Or they will ask you for that W number. It matches your donation, and it's how we check it track it down and then survey you can let me know how everything went for you today okay awesome thank you amanda thank you for coming in yes thank you for uh, uh answering my questions you're welcome and determining that i'm perfect
and thank you for all you do. Thank you for coming to the house. Let's go get some snacks. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. You can do it, Kathy. It's all good. Thank you to Memorial Blood Centers for helping us host our blood drive as well as answering our questions. We have provided links to Memorial Blood Centers and the Red Cross websites in the description of this video to help you find a local blood donation site in your community. We are now joined by a very special guest on Homes for Heroes Live, Homes for Heroes Outreach Coordinator Steve Blackwell. Good to be here. Welcome to the show. Before we get started um, about this series, you're going to help us introduce today. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Uh, I come to Home Serials with 30 years in public safety experience, emergency management, former military and a veteran myself. And my role with Home Serials is to help our affiliates just connect and engage with that hero community, communicate, uh, uh, build relationships and really help grow their business as well as serve the heroes in their communities. All right. Well, we're really happy to have you on the yeah. show and on this team. So um, can you also just tell us a little bit, I guess, um, about the series and what it's going to the importance that it's going to bring. Yep. One of the biggest challenges in law enforcement, and especially the first responder community, is uh, a lot of the health and wellness issues within that community. Uh, everything from mental health issues with our first responders all the way to exercise, sleep, uh, these health and wellness issues that make them more resilient to the job. So mm -hmm. we're going to focus our four-part series coming up on uh, how the first responder community, the law enforcement community is, is putting together these programs to help these first responders uh, uh, deal with the challenges of their jobs. So this is going to be a great series. We've got some experts coming in uh, that are going to talk about it. They deal with it every day. They do intervention work and so forth with the first responder community uh, as well. So it's going to be a great series. A lot of great information for our affiliates and fans out there. Awesome. Well, we look forward to this series. Thank you for tuning in to Homes for Heroes Live. We would love to hear from you. So leave us a comment below with any feedback or suggestions on stories that you would like us to cover. If you are tuning in on YouTube, make sure you give this video a like, subscribe, and then hit the notification bell so you get notified when we go live every Tuesday. We look forward to catching up with you next week.